Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Paul Gillen, with SiliconANGLE, my co-host. And we're here live at IBM Impact, and our next guest is Doug Bailoff, GM of the Power Systems Group at IBM, CUBE alumni. We spoke with him just a few weeks ago at IBM Pulse. Um, a lot's changed. Well, first, welcome, welcome back. It's great to be back in Vegas. Uh, feels like uh, many times already this year. Lots changed. We, at Pulse, we were talking a lot about some of the, the power systems and kind of how that you know, HPC, mainframe, mm -hmm. all that software enablement, but a lot's changed. Uh, big announcement in San Francisco. Just give us an update uh, quickly. What's transpired since Pulse to today? Yeah, so uh, thanks John. Thanks John and Paul for having me here today. As you said, a lot has changed. We've been moving very fast with our power platform to connect it to the whole trends we see in the marketplace around you know, cloud analytics, mobile, and social. At the end of the day, it's really around data. And what we see from the new Power8 systems is they are squarely designed and focused on solving the big data problem. So as these new systems come to market, they're not just addressing the traditional sort of relational database structured data, they're working on solving client problems around just scale of data, but all kinds of data. Unstructured, mobile data, right? MongoDB, right? Uh, no SQL, the list goes on and on. So data's a big trend. The other is economics for the cloud. These are really our first systems designed for scale out computing driving a different, differentiated price point for the cloud. And the third is the whole aspect around openness. We have fundamentally opened up the power platform. Paul and I were talking in the intro, IBM's obviously 50 years of innovation with the mainframe, mm -hmm. celebrating that's kind of like apple pie and, uh, and hot dogs and baseball, you know, it's great. But it's not a strategic, it's a cash cow, but it's not a strategic thing. But we were talking in Paul's just move to the cloud, mm -hmm. and in essence is like a mainframe concept. So, mm -hmm. so share with the folks out there the, the tea leaves, uh, read the tea leaves around, okay, mainframe's great, big legacy, mm -hmm. you know, the motherhood of the mainframe's great, but now it's moving to the cloud. What similarities are you seeing from those mainframe growth days yep. where it was a real force, and how is cloud becoming that new, in my words, the new kind of mainframe, for lack of a better description, and, and how does that software component play into it? Yeah, certainly from a cloud standpoint, what we see is um, clients with uh, on-premise infrastructure looking to find ways to rapidly and flexibly sort of move to a hybrid infrastructure. You know, so perhaps the cloud is a place they do their mobile application, they compose the object, objects together. They do their web enterprise applications, quickly connecting to that backend infrastructure. We saw some great examples of that here uh, in Marie's section uh, just uh, moments ago on stage. So this hybrid notion, I think, is really where we'll see enterprises going, leveraging their power infrastructure or mainframe infrastructure on premise and connecting that to the, the cloud. Could be the IBM cloud or some other cloud, in the IBM cloud case, it could be running power here with our announcement at Pulse of power as part of the software infrastructure. One of the things you've done, Doug, is you've created the Open Power Foundation now really to reemphasize the idea that, that uh, power is, a, is an open platform and you're looking to bring other partners into the fold. Um, how, how are you, what are you doing to convince the companies who may be accustomed to thinking of IBM as, a, as proprietary, as an all or nothing type of platform, that you really are open, you really do want to involve them. Well, one of the interesting trends we see, you know, sort of as we deal with this sort of composable application, composable enterprise model is, every company is looking for the best technology to solve, solve the issue they have. But the best technology doesn't necessarily mean it comes from one company, and they're all incredibly uncomfortable with one company setting the innovation agenda. So with our Open Power Foundation, we've said, you know what, we completely agree. IBM cannot be the company that thinks we can do it all. It's going to take a community of innovators to bring together the best pieces to solve different problems. So that started with an idea with Google, NVIDIA, Mellanox, and Tyann, you know, the founding five members. It now has blossomed up to 26 members and growing daily. In fact, in San Francisco last week, we were signing you know, new partners such as Canonical, which brings Ubuntu to the market, and Rice University, who's working with uh, the Texas Medical Center, into the Open Power Foundation, all around innovation and solving real problems with new approaches. And nevertheless, when you look at the members of the foundation, I mean, there's one company that stands out, and that is Google. I thought you were going to say IBM. <laughs> How important is Google's endorsement, and, and they're really taking this ball and running with it to the success of this, uh, this initiative? Yeah, so Gordon McKean is the, uh, he's from Google, he's responsible for their infrastructure, he's also the chairman of the Open Power Foundation. So they've, they've had a very strong hand in setting the direction for where the Open Power Foundation goes so far, and obviously with Gordon as the chairman, he will continue to do that. Uh, they play a strong role in uh, not only what they're going to do with it, and the, I mean, they've contributed developers, they've contributed software to the Open Power Foundation. Obviously, we've contributed the Power8 architecture and a licensing model, but also reference design. So, um, and I think that's what's exciting people to join. If you look at the memory companies joining, the uh, accelerator companies joining, and now really the new trend is end users joining. 
And, and I think that's creating sort of this whole global movement around openness versus closed. What does an end user have to gain by joining a, yeah. a, hardware, uh, a hardware design uh, yeah. uh, coalition? Yeah, and we actually see it not as a hardware, although that's certainly where it started, Paul, so I acknowledge that. It's really sort of this end-to-end -end ecosystem around innovation. What I see end users looking for, back to this point of flexibility, speed of development, rapid, composable, fit my need is what they're seeing. Fit my need, I don't want to feel like somebody else is defining what I need, I want to be able to to take the best pieces and fit them together. Some great examples would be the ability to use power eight systems with NVIDIA, right? And bringing that sort of hybrid compute model of NVIDIA for GPU acceleration, uh, say for Java workloads, great example of 10X acceleration with Java workloads with NVIDIA plus power eight. We've got another example down on the floor of, uh, again, composing together these systems to go do Monte Carlo simula simulation for the uh, finance market. What is a magnitude improvement in performance? So we're seeing, we got some great demos down on the floor, these sort of, wouldn't, you know, couldn't you imagine? What if you could put together these pieces in a composable system and bring that to new use cases? I've got some questions out in the Twitter sphere and the social crowd chat. Uh, if you're watching this, you want to ask Doug a question, go to crowdchat.net slash IBM Impact. We'll be uh, fielding questions there. We've got the first question coming in. Um, IBM Power sounds so IBM centric. How is IBM changing that perception to be broader? And how are you attracting non-IBM customers yeah. uh, to, to come along with this new offering? Uh, well, certainly Power is the IBM brand for our, for our core processor, the Power A processor, but and then the systems we built on top of it. One of the uh, aspects of Open Power is there will be other uh, server companies in the market who will bring this Power technology to their clients. So as I think about Open Power, I sort of describe it this way. It is about bringing Power technology to new buyers and new markets new buyers potentially being clients like Google and others in the sort of the hyperscale data center, and new markets like China. Certainly China is undergoing a tremendous change in the way in which they think about the domestic IT market. It's also about creating this innovation pipeline so that this community of innovators who are you know, coming up with creative ideas to solve different problems I've described are able then to sort of bring this innovation to the power platform. So we're absolutely opening up and I think of no better way to attract new buyers than to talk yeah. about openness. And certainly Google will be here. Google's you know, involved in the, in the openness of this. Talk a little about Google's role involved in, in uh, Power. Yeah, I can't, uh, obviously I can't talk for, uh, for Google, that uh, only <laughs> Go Google ahead. can talk for Google. And, uh, <laughs> no, I think it's okay, it's uh, No, that, that, wouldn't be, uh, that wouldn't be appropriate for me. I can talk about the role, as I mentioned a minute ago, in terms of uh, chairman of the Open Power Foundation. I do understand here, down on the demo floor, um, Google has brought their own Power Rate uh, motherboard, and uh, I think uh, Gordon McKean will be showing that off down there if anybody wants to stop by and see it. Uh, you uh, announced to Pulse that you'd be moving power to SoftLayer and yeah. also Watson on top of SoftLayer by the autumn, uh, by the fall. Is that uh, schedule still on track? Actually, uh, if you uh, saw uh, a minute ago uh, what Mike Roden was talking about in terms of Watson available in the cloud, that's actually running on power this quarter. Is that for developers only at this point, for business partners, or is that for end customers as well? Uh, I think if I remember from what Mike described, it's really across the spectrum of potential users, with developers to end users as well. Uh, it's a great question for Mike, uh, you know, sort of the, the ultimate consumption of it is, is in his space. But from a rollout for power in the software, now it's interesting, you know, we've sort of been talking about these things, you mentioned Pulse, and obviously over the last couple quarters and, and uh, months, you know, underneath it all has been Power 8, we just never said that. When we talked about our commitment to KVN and Linux, a little Indian Linux by the way, right, for ease of application porting, it was all about Power 8. When we talked about Watson as a service, it was about Power 8. We talked about Watson as software, Power 8. We're sort of now here, so we've been sort of building up to this over the last nine months. So I want to ask you, Doug, one of the things that comes out, obviously IBM is, I mean IBM is so good about the messaging. I mean, you guys are all, you're right on the fault line of all the killer mega trends uh, as, as the plates shift yeah. and, and the tectonic shifts in the industry. One of them is real-time analytics. Yeah. And um, the other one that we were talking on the intro is this whole trend towards this maker movement. And I was commenting, I was at the, I was at the Macintosh's 30th anniversary uh, celebration of the Mac. Um, and then, you know, and the open compute was now uh, on, upon us the next week. Yeah. This movement towards tinkering and hacking mm -hmm. on hardware with new, with open source software has really put a big trend. So, yeah. and, and you're seeing some things with Raspberry Pi here. Developers are really geeking out on, the, on, yep. the, on this maker uh, movement. Right. It's really spurring creativity. So I got to ask you, how does that, Power. I mean, you hit a core. You hit a nerve there with power. Yeah. yeah. So, how is a developer who really wants to get their hands dirty mm -hmm. and build software? How does the power system help them? And what kinds of things can they do? Mm -hmm. Is it analytics? Is there more sexier applications? What's your What's your take? Share some color on that. Yeah. So, as we think about the uh, sort of where power plays best in the marketplace, certainly from a design point, we see power really, as I said earlier, addressing all the types of data. And the good news is there, there's no lack of data right now. 
right? And it's all kind of different kind of data that we see going on in the marketplace. So, you know, we talked about as an example, IBM Cloud, Cloud Cloud no SQL database for SaaS. So think about the benefits one could see of no, uh, no SQL data on power and software, which is something we're actually working on, right? From uh, moving power into that sort of no SQL space. So I think any aspect around data is a good fit for the power architecture. Now to your tinkerer question, one of the things we've really focused on here with this launch is making application and tinkering simple on power. And we've done that by completely supporting an open stack of software from Linux, not big Indian analytics, if you want to get a little geeky for a second, it's really the little Indian. What does that mean? It's the bitmaps are the same way as they are on x86. So now with little Indian analytics, KVM as a hypervisor, OpenStack for management, and then the smart cloud portfolio on top, you've got a completely open stack of software that makes picking up um, a higher level language application, you can pick it up and drop it over on power without a single change to it. Think about minutes versus hours or days of what it used to take. The same is true of C, C++. It's a simple recompile and go for 95% of the apps. So we truly have addressed this sort of speed of development of applications on power. Doug, IBM sold off its x86 business to Lenovo and now you set up the, the Open Power Foundation. Uh, are you directly in, con in, uh, in uh, conflict with Intel at this point? Are you competing directly with Intel? I think for the targeted workloads, I'm talking about data-centric workloads, enterprise applications based on Java, you know, workloads such as mobile that are enablement to the core, absolutely yes. And in fact, the economic point I made earlier, we see the economics of our scale-out platform which delivers great performance at up to 20 to 30% less acquisition price. So it's a, it's a direct play for the infrastructure market. How important is it to you? You currently don't have any partners who are actually fabbing your, your, the Power 8 chips. Right. How important is it to you to get a partner in the door actually making Power 8? Yeah, the, the fab part isn't the most important part. Uh, what's important to me from an uh, ecosystem is having chip development companies with me that are doing derivatives of the power architecture like Suzo Power Core. It's about having IO members, memory members, software partners doing software around it and around end users. Building out that ecosystem now at 26, as I mentioned, and growing is really the focus of the Open Power Foundation. If somebody wants to join from a fab, we're completely open to that, but I don't think that's as super important as the other areas. There have been previous efforts by companies to create sort of uh, standards around risk architectures, PA risk, yeah. Sun risk, uh, even IBM uh, many years ago. What, what have you learned from those efforts, most yeah. of which didn't go very far? What they have did. you learned from those efforts that you're applying to Power Foundation? Yeah, I mean, it always starts with, uh, and it's going to sound uh, kind of weak, but it always starts with listening to the marketplace. And the big thing that we did this time, and I would give Google credit for us for drag, grabbing us by the shoulders virtually and saying, guys, get on with the Linux play. Get on with it in a big way and make it little Indian so it's easy for applications to port to. Uh, Ubuntu will talk later here today with me about the way in which they've uh, taken thousands of applications now within their uh, ecosystem and brought them to the power architecture. They couldn't have done that before. So that was sort of the big aha moment we had based on the open power relationships. This get on with it from a Linux client so the market's chosen around an open stack of software for new application development. You mentioned Ubuntu a couple of times now. Are they sort of the preferred Linux uh, platform for power? No, I would say it, uh, they're the re most recent to join. Uh, we continue to have great relationships with Red Hat and SUSE. Uh, Ubuntu happens to be the new one we're announcing today as sort of the third member of the distro. They also happen to be the first bringing Little Indian Linux to the platform. The others have plans in the future, but that's partly why I mentioned them. They're new, and they're the first with Little Indian Linux. You were, uh, you headed up IBM's uh, mainframe division before you moved to right. this role. That's right. Uh, you were trying to tell a Linux story to those, uh, to, to that group, of course, a, a ZOS uh, yeah. focused, uh, very much uh, uh, a, a different kind of, of migration play there. Yeah. Uh, what what did that experience teach you as you're yeah. trying to promote Linux as really the platform going forward for the future? Yeah, I mean, Linux on the mainframe has been incredibly successful. If you look at the capacity now we ship each quarter on the mainframe, the majority of that capacity is now for Linux applications on the mainframe versus sort of that core, that core infrastructure that's existed for years. So it has been a great enabler for new application capture on the mainframe. What did I learn? Get on with it. Back to the point of, the application developers have decided an open stack of software is the right answer. So, me trying to convince them to do new application development on my core you know, infrastructure of AX and IBM I, it's a much harder play. That remains super important though, and this is the question just like the mainframe I get all the time. AIX, IBM I, super important to my strategy going forward. It's where my tens of thousands of clients are today. I need to augment that though with a new uh, application capture engine, and that's Linux. 
That's uh, what I learned. Doug, talk about the investment you're making in the power. Obviously, IBM is all in on Linux. You're seeing right. OpenStack, big part yeah. of your Blue Mix, all the cloud stuff, Blue Acceleration, a lot of stuff in the portfolio. Yeah. So talk about how this fits in with the existing portfolio within IBM, yep. and also how does this tie into the, some of the key applications around analytics and then mm -hmm. the cloud? What is it? Right. Where, I mean, are you guys not giving up the hardware per se? You're opening it up, you're yeah. seeing that being right. more of an enabling strategy with right. openness. So how does that all reconcile? I mean, you got big dollars going into the yeah. market with Linux. Right, right. Take us through that next generation roadmap. Where does it, where, where does it lead to? Yeah, great question. So, you know, as we've sort of been sharing here on announce day, I mean, we didn't just start this move to Power 8 here just in the last nine months. In fact, the Power 8 processor, really what we see is the first processor designed for big data, that started over three years ago. And we saw the problem coming in the market of a true need for a system and processor that was going to help clients with the big data problem. We've spent, I think our best uh, estimate is over two and a half billion dollars in those three years developing Power 8 processors and the technology around it. So, pretty significant investment. Yep. Recently, as you mentioned, John, we announced our second billion dollar commitment to Linux. This time, Linux on Power. And it's really about the ecosystem, it's about the porting centers, it's about the ISVs, it's about the go-to-market, and obviously the products as well, too. I so, mean, a billion dollars is not that much money these days. How about 10 billion? I mean, you know, I mean, well, come I, on. I, I mean, <laughs> you know, know, I don't 10 know. 10 billion is the new one billion. Oh, come on, <laughs> I, think, I think we'd all agree. I'd take a billion any day, right? <laughs> I mean, a billion is still an important number, right? For a company the size of IBM as well. So, uh, sizable investments we've made. Now, to your point earlier in terms of, so where does this play out? Um, you know, we're not getting out of the power hardware business. This is incredibly important. Our chairman, Ginny Romendi, has been very clear on the importance of you know, what we call high-end, high-value systems and the role power plays in that. I actually think with the uh, divestiture that's still uh, you know, underway, um, this helps sort of uh, get clarity of the portfolio of where we're, uh, where we're placing our bets from a server Let perspective. Me be more specific. And where we can bring value and innovation. Yeah, I mean, you guys have a lot of value. I mean, it's, it's in the pick a customer base vertical, you guys are pretty much there. But I want to get more specific around the HPC, because okay. HPC market's changing, right? It used to be, yes. throw a box at it, and you're done. Right, right. Now you got cloud is a big part of the HPC equation. Right. You're talking about compute, uh, a lot of unlimited compute yeah. theoretically but big data is kind of the things where we're going to talk about Internet of Things today. Right. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on in the cloud. So it's not so much the big data pipe, it's the pile of data. So yep. if someone wants yep. to do a computation, is this kind of where you see it going? Is that the focus? Is it the, is HPC the new, is, is HPC, what is, what is the new HPC? Yeah, so I say the new HPC is much more analytics driven than it is pure compute, right? If you think about the C in, the C in HPC, it was all just about compute part, right? To be able to run fast. That's still important, but what we see and to no surprise again is many of these, you know, whether it be government oriented, utilities, whatever it happens to be, are very much focused on the same problem commercial clients are, data. And so HPC evolves to, sometimes we call it HPA, high performance analytics, taking advantage of this, lots of cores, lots of threads, large memory working space, and yet very big IO bandwidth to move the data around. So I got to ask Paul, because we're a throwback here, it's not throwback Thursday, not throwback Thursday yet, but are we going back to MIS departments and data processing departments? I mean, that's, you're basically talking about data processing. Uh, this is uh, data scientists, right? <laughs> I mean, we see kind of this role evolving around um, you know, folks who sort of focus every day on the, the science of data, getting business value out of this uh, gobs of data they have. You've got a lot of partners working with the Power, uh, PowerAid reference spec right now. Can you give us an idea, a preview, of when we might see chips coming out that would include, say, an IBM Power with an NVIDIA or Mellanox? You know, um, I can't obviously, again, speak for them and announce their own plans. Uh, you know, what would you our, like to see? <laughs> <laughs> what would I, you know, I, I think uh, the faster we create, create innovation, the better for the marketplace. Uh, I know one thing that uh, is being shown down on the floor and was publicly stated by NVIDIA last week, so I'll repeat it, is this, this sort of marriage between uh, NVIDIA GPUs and power on a, on a single system. Uh, I think you can look for that later this year. We got some commentary from the crowd again. Uh, Tank, Tim Crawford, shout out to Tim. Um, my point of view, IBM would, would do well to play down their hardware position, not build on it. IBM's hardware play is better suited for cloud providers than enterprises moving forward. What's mm -hmm. your comment on that, on yeah. his, his take on that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think part of it is, uh, so we're not going to play it down, obviously we're loud and proud, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, but so putting that part aside for a second. <laughs> okay, I, I do agree yeah, with them, I, I do agree with them on the role the cloud plays. Um, you know, I think what we see going forward is this incredibly important role around sort of what we call sort of the hyperscale clients. Those who are building out the internet data center that we talk, uh, talk about at sort of the dinner table at home every day. But then there's the managed service providers, those who are sort of much more mid-size and have drawn a circle on a map and said, you know what, I'm going to be the service provider for this city, this state, this country, and we're bringing power technology to them, sort of married with PureFlex, by the way, for the mid-range service provider. And that's got to come with a different economic model by, which the, by, by the way in which they acquire that infrastructure. So I completely agree with the second part, 
power for the cloud is a very important play for us. So in the last minute, I want to just get your take on um, what you're expecting over the next year. Obviously, the customer yeah. activity here. Give us some taste of the meat on the bone with customers and some deployments. Yeah. Uh, where, where's the action happening and what do you see projecting out of the next 12 months? Just kind of a high level uh, execution. Yeah, cer certainly we are, we are looking to uh, power each systems to be a catalyst for uh, improving our business performance around the power platform. Our CFO, Martin Schroeder, has been very clear on, as I have been, that you know, power rate and all we've done to reposition the platform, new applications with Linux, the target for the cloud, and the role power plays for big data are where the market's going or gone and, are where, and is where power's going. So I think from a business perspective, we are now very much aligned with the market. And based on that, we will look forward to strong success and adoption. So next year, our next event at Pulse or here, what's the big um, success, top three things you want to check off to have a good year for power? What's the big, what's the big objective? Yeah, I think with anything where you're sort of shifting to a new space for ourselves, although a space that's large, I'm absolutely looking forward to sharing sort of proof points and references around the role power is playing for big data solutions to clients, right? Second part would be the success of open power, continuing to grow, but also but more than just growth of members, continuing to bring innovation to the market and continuing to demonstrate as we are today on the show floor, true innovation that benefits clients in the end. As people start to instrument the, the business, this is my, my last question and we'll break and then I'll get you, get, let you get the last word in, but as customers start instrumenting their business, big yeah. data, obviously a big part of it. Yes. Um, but now you're starting to see the convergence of physical spaces, the yep. work environment, it yep. could be um, in the hospital, machines, mm -hmm. to uh, other physical attributes. How, is, mm -hmm. how do you see that vision of the Internet of Things playing out with yeah. regard to power? Yeah, I think, I think it comes back to um, clients want to consume IT in the way in which they want to consume it. It could be infrastructure as a service, could be platform as a service, could be software as a service. My goal is to bring power to however they want to consume it. Right? It could be on-premise, it could be off-premise in the cloud, it could be as a, a way in which we deliver phenomenal benefits under a blue mix composable set of applications. So, however they want to consume IT, power will be Does there. Does that include embeddable devices? Uh, you know, less focused on embeddable. I mean, we've had uh, power in the past focused on embeddable. I'm really focused with power and open power on the server market. Sometimes that server is more of an appliance based. That's fine, but try putting it into cars and so forth, that's not our focus. Doug, I'll let you get the final word in. Tell the folks out there why this show is so important. What is the main message to your customers and IBM across the portfolio? Yeah, so I think you know, the reason we're at this show announcing the new power systems is back to the point of the changes we see in the marketplace. This, you know, every mobile transaction, right, every reach to the cloud, every social post, it drives data. And data ultimately does depend on the infrastructure. And the infrastructure we believe certainly matters. That's why we're investing in new power systems focused on, back to what I said before, data, cloud, and being the most open server platform in the marketplace. Doug, the general manager of the power systems group at IBM. I mean, I had the mainframe 50th anniversary. Like I was saying earlier, data processing is back in vogue. It's an old term, but that's what's happening. It's data science, data processing. Uh, this is theCUBE. We're processing the data and sharing it with you. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.